craft has found 1,284 new planets. The single largest finding of planets to date. And this shit is verified. Stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. This is space. There's space all over the place. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents May 10th. NASA's Kepler mission announces largest collection of planets ever discovered. Now, this is exciting because, oh my god, it's verified. We got planets everywhere. And though, I'm gonna guess none of these planets are close or going to smash into Earth, so technically, to most people, it's a boring story. This announcement more than doubles the number of confirmed planets from Kepler, says Ellen Stofan, the chief scientist at NASA headquarters in Washington. This gives us hope that somewhere out there around a star much like ours, we can eventually discover another Earth. Which raises the question why are scientists so obsessed with finding habitable planets? I mean, unless they're in our solar system, we really can't get there in a lifetime. And what do we find in our habitable planet? And they're far more advanced in technology, but just like Earth, where they want to enslave and profit and destroy planets. Holy crap, I didn't think this story would be that depressing. Analysis was performed on the Kepler Spacecraft Telescope's July 2015 Planet Candidate Catalog, which identified 4,302 potential planets. For 1,284 of them, the candidates, the probability of being a planet is greater than 99%. Take that, Pluto. The minimum required to earn the status of planet. Awesome. An additional 1,327 candidates are more likely than not to be actual planets, but they do not meet the 99% threshold because they have not cleared the orbit. That was a joke. And they will require additional study. The remaining 707 are more than likely to be some astrophysical phenomena. God, I love astrophysical phenomena. This analysis also validated 984 candidates previously, verified by other techniques. Before the Kepler spacecraft launched, we did not know whether exoplanets were rare or common in the galaxy. Thanks to Kepler and the research community, we now know there can be more planets than stars. Well, let's see. If the average star has three or four planets, then yeah. It's kind of like saying, we now know there are more fingers than hands. Thanks, science boy. Paul Hertz, Astrophysics Division Director at NASA Headquarters. This knowledge informs the future missions that are needed to take us ever closer to finding out whether we're alone in the universe. Hey, science boy, I got an idea. Why don't you guys put up some new telescopes? Why don't you guys put up some new telescopes and replace the Hubble? It's been like 25 years. I know you're having the James Webb Space Telescope, but if that thing explodes in the rocket, then we're going to have nothing. So why don't you put up like five or six or ten? Yeah, I don't mind. If you guys spend a lot of money on cool telescopes, just let us see the data. Kepler captures the discrete signals of distant planets. Decreases in brightness that occur when planets pass in front of or transit their stars. Much like the May 9 Mercury transit of our sun. Since the discovery of the first planets outside of our solar system, more than two decades ago, researchers have resorted to a laborious one-by-one -one process of verifying suspected planets. But thanks to the artificial intelligence, scientists can kick back, put their feet up, drink whiskey, and look at naughty magazines of atoms. This latest announcement, however, is based on a statistical analysis method that can be applied to many planet candidates simultaneously. Timothy Morton, Associate Research Scholar at Princeton University in New Jersey. Wait, Princeton's in New Jersey? I didn't know that. I feel dumb. And lead author of the scientific paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. Employed a technique to assign each Kepler candidate a planethood probability percentage. The first such automated computation of the scale, as previous statistical techniques focused on subgroups within the greater list of planet candidates identified by Kepler. Can I see like a chart? How many of these are gas giants? How many of these are gas planets? How many of them are gas dwarfs? And they have Meraki planets. Now we know more about the scientific phenomenon. Planet candidates can be thought of like breadcrumbs. Said Morton, you drop a few large crumbs on the floor, you can pick them up one by one. But if you spill a whole bag of tiny crumbs, you're going to need a broom. This statistical analysis is our broom, bitches. And the newly validated batch of planets, nearly 550, could be rocky planets like Earth. Based on their size, nine of these orbit their sun's habitable zone, which is the distance from a star where orbiting planets can have surface temperatures that allow liquid water to pool. Wait, the Mercury has water. It's right next to the sun. Venus has water, and it's closer to the sun than Earth. Mars has water. It's far away. Pluto has water. It's far away. So, like, your whole water habitable zone theory seems to be old, bro. Get with the times, bitches. Remember, bitches is a term like my brothers or my sisters or my people. It's a term of love. With the addition of these nine, 21 exoplanets are now known to be members of this exclusive group. They say not to count our chickens before they're hatched. But that's exactly what these results allow us to do based on probabilities that each egg candidate will hatch into a chick, bonafide planet, and remember the sun is just a phoenix egg, said Natalie Badalha, co-author of the paper and Kepler mission scientist at NASA's Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California. Hey, where's that? Can I get invite? Come down and ask you guys a question. I'd like to take Thor News to the next level and be more sciencey. Stick a microphone in your face and ask awkward questions. No, I'm just kidding. I would be awesome cool and stuff. Okay, whatever. This work will help Kepler reach its full potential by yielding a deeper understanding of the number of stars that harbor potentially habitable Earth-sized planets, a number that's needed to design future missions to search for habitable environments and living worlds. Why don't you just build the most badass telescope possible and get it done in like three years? You know, like this 21 years shit only science could get away with. Of the nearly 5,000 total planet candidates found to date, more than 3,200 have now been verified. And 2,325 of these were discovered by Kepler, launched in March 
2009, Kepler was the first NASA mission to find potentially habitable Earth-sized planet. Because we're wearing out this one pretty fast. And it sounds like the poles are about to flip. Asterisk. Nobody knows, bro. For four years, Kepler monitored 150,000 stars in a single patch of sky, measuring the tiny telltale dip in brightness of a star that can be produced by a transiting planet. In 2018, NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite will use the same method to monitor 200,000 bright nearby stars and search for planets, focusing on Earth and super Earth size. Awesome. How big you gotta be to be a super Earth? Because Superman was a normal sized dude, he just had powers, you know? Supers are weird. Why don't you just say big Earth? Super. You know, what makes it super just because it's bigger? Ames manages the Kepler missions for NASA Science Mission Directorate in Washington. Yay, we all love Washington. The agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, managed Kepler Mission Development. Ball Aerospace and Technologies Corporation operates the flight system. We support for them in the laboratory for atmospheric and space physics at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Ooh, I'd like to visit that place too. That's good briefing materials. Hope I don't have to see any briefs. All right, we got a graph. Oh, this is going to be so fascinating. Are you ready to be excited? Let the excitement begin. So as the exoplanet passes in front of the sun, a little bit of light is blocked out. And from there, we know that it's a planet. Or a giant round asteroid. Right? Okay. Wow, that was exciting. It's like a Mercury transit. Exoplanet transit. Exoplanet discoveries through the years. Yes, we totally had a bottleneck breakout in 2014. And now that bottleneck breakout record has been broken. Kepler planets start out as candidates. Well, I'd rather vote for Kepler planet than Trump or Clinton. Ooh. Blended stellar binaries. Grazing stellar binaries. Planet verification. Kick. All right, I think we're down. All right, fascinating stuff. We learned stuff, I hope. Whatever. Okay, we're moving. Ow, peace. Well, hot dang it. Kepler, the planet-finding fool of a spacecraft, has found 1,284 new planets. The single largest finding of planets to date. And this shit is verified. Stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. This is space. There's space all over the place. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents May 10th. NASA's Kepler mission announces largest collection of planets ever discovered. Now this is exciting because, oh my god, it's verified. We got planets everywhere. And though, I'm gonna guess, none of these planets are close or going to smash into Earth. So technically, to most people, it's a boring story. This announcement more than doubles the number of confirmed planets from Kepler, says Ellen Stofan, the chief scientist at NASA headquarters in Washington. This gives us hope that somewhere out there around a star much like ours, we can eventually discover another Earth. Which raises the question, why are scientists so obsessed with finding habitable planets. I mean, unless they're in our solar system, we really can't get there in a lifetime. And what do we find in our habitable planets?